Facebook's PR campaign against Google may cost more than a few bad headlines. Could investors start to question why Facebook is so insecure about Google's social push? Let's bring in one of the most well-respected angel investors in Silicon Valley, Chris Dixon, founder of Founder Collective and CEO of Hunch. He is bullish on Facebook's revenue streams. Chris, welcome to Bloomberg West. Thanks for having me. So first of all, I have to ask you, you this PR smear against Google, do you think this could really damage Facebook's reputation and potentially its valuation? Uh, I, well, I don't know the details of what happened, but my guess is it'll probably blow over and um, ultimately I think Facebook is um, controls sort of one of two key axes of power on the internet, one being search, one being social, and I think their prospects are very uh, strong. If indeed, though, Google does create this social circle product by scraping Facebook data, not unlike what they did with Google News, could that potentially devalue Facebook? Well, certainly, if you know, Google's going very strong, according to the reports, uh, on the social front, and to the extent that they can make headroads on that, um, that, that, would, that would hurt Facebook's prospects. Um, I think this scraping discussion has been going on. I mean, all, fit, Google's been doing what it always does, which is it crawls the web and analyzes websites and has been taking, from my understanding, just public data that Facebook makes available. Um, so, you know, I don't think anything they've done is, is out of the character from what they've done in the past. Now, moving to another big story this sure. week in tech news, Microsoft Skype. You were yeah. an early investor in Skype while you were at Bessemer. Do That's you right. think it was the right call to sell to Microsoft rather than go through with the IPO? Well, personally, I would have liked to have seen them, seen them um, IPO, and I think it would have been good for the tech ecosystem to have a, them as an independent public company. And I think probably um, from a value perspective, having them be sort of independent as a new kind of telecommunications company would have been very interesting. Um, you know, I think Microsoft buying them is, wasn't who I expected to buy them. It's not totally unnatural. Um, I think a lot will depend on whether they allow, I mean, one of the, one of the things that makes Skype so valuable is that it's cross-platform. Um, so it'll be uh, sort of a dilemma for Microsoft uh, to, to uh, see how they use it if they try to use it to, for example, make their Windows Mobile or other proprietary platform forms more valuable. That would thereby undermine um, a lot of what makes Skype useful. So I think it's a kind of a, a interesting tension there. That said, you have sold a number of companies to Facebook, Google. Um, well, when I've, you're, I've and invest, you, yeah, I, yeah, I just invested in companies. And you're invest, an investor in a number of very successful companies. How do you advise them uh, in this kind of environment about how to exit? But how to exit? Well, I mean, I think, so right now what we're seeing is there's definitely a, what we call sort of frothiness at the early stage in, in terms of angel investing. There's a lot of activity there and a lot of excitement and valuations have gone up, uh, ordered like probably 5x over the last year. Um, we haven't seen that as much on the, on the acquisition side. I mean, sort of there's been all this talk of Google potentially buying Twitter for $10 billion or something, um, but it hasn't happened. Um, I think what will be interesting is when we see a bunch of these IPOs, potentially Facebook IPOing, LinkedIn, Pandora, how those perform, and if they perform well, we might see a whole sort of another wave of acquisitions. So right now, I think there's a lot of kind of wait and see as to what happens with those, with uh, with all the prospects of those kind of kind of marquee social companies. And one of the trends we're seeing is a lot more angel investors at the very, very early straight yeah. stages, like Milk, which is Kevin Rose's startup. Uh, 24 angel investors in the Series A, also yeah. Square, Jack Dorsey, 18 angel investors. Do you see any risks there? Well, I think, I mean, so one of the big trends that's happened is that, is that VC funds have gotten bigger and bigger, and meanwhile, it costs less and less to start an internet company. Um, and so what you've seen is, is people sort of um, uh, avoid the kind of traditional path of raising from venture capitalists and instead go with these sort of strategic angels. So if you look at, like, Kevin Rose's, for example, he had all these very smart internet people invest, um, which can potentially really help the company at its early stage. I think it's probably a positive trend, but... And lastly, I want to ask you about Hunch, which is based on this whole idea of social curation, personalizing content, essentially. Yep. In my opinion, there's no, no one out there yet that's done this incredibly well. I think yep. Twitter's come very close. Why do you think Hunch has a winning formula? Yeah. Well, we, we sort of um, layer on a, um, a very advanced techno techno technology and algorithm for um, sort of figuring out what you, any particular person might like. You can kind of think of it as the Netflix prediction feature, but we sort of do it for everything. We think that's, we think there's a, there's a use for uh, machines sort of to be combined with human curation to kind of create the best possible experience. All right. Chris Dixon uh, with Hunch, founder collective and a noted angel investor. Great to have you here Thank you. on Bloomberg West.